I'd like to ask you another question about this same situation. Um, now that we've found the displacement, um, I'd like to ask you how long will this object be in the air? How long will this object be in the air? Please pause the video and try this new problem. This new problem is about the same situation we were just talking about. The same situation we were just talking about. Try to figure out how long will this object be in the air. I hope you paused the video and gave that a shot. Well, we can erase a lot of our previous work here. Now we know the displacement is positive 0.46 meters, so I can write that in above. Even though the previous question was just about the magnitude of the displacement, when we're actually writing down the kinematics variables, we should always be writing down um, the full variable, including the sign. Because when you work with the kinematics equations, you need to use the full variable, including the sign. So our answer was just 0.46 meters to the previous question. Uh, but that the displacement was still point, uh, positive 0.46 meters. Okay, um, and now um, we want to indicate what is this question asking us? Well, it seems like it's focusing on the time. Uh, but here would be a case where it would be helpful to um, really go back to our path. Is, still, is this the correct um, drawing for the path? Well, now it's not, because now the final position is not at the peak anymore. Now we're rising and then falling down as well. We're now rising and falling down. So now the path would look like this. Well, Now we have an upward path and a downward path. What's the downward path going to look like? Well, we know that at the peak, we're starting with a velocity of zero meters per second. How fast are we going to be going by the time we hit the ground? Well, remember, we can use symmetry. We can use symmetry um, since when we originally left the ground, we were going three meters per second. When we hit the ground again, we should also be going three meters per second. But now we're moving downwards. So this velocity when we hit the ground now is going to be negative 3 meters per second. That's the symmetry of projectile motion. When we originally left the ground, we're going up at 3 meters per second. So by symmetry, when we hit the ground, we should be going down at 3 meters per second. Uh, we can draw our velocity and acceleration vectors here. The acceleration vector is still pointing down. But now the velocity vector on the downward path would also be pointing down. On the upward path, the velocity is up. But on the downward path, the velocity is down. The acceleration is always going to be down. Um, for free fall, because that's coming from gravity. So now we have um, this picture. Maybe I won't put dots here, because these are not really the final positions anymore. And remember that, um, in reality, um, we're going up and down along the same path. The only reason why I'm drawing the downward path off to the side here is so it doesn't obscure the upward path. So here's how we could draw the entire path of this object. Um, so, um, we could solve the problem if we use um, leaving the ground as our initial position and hitting the ground as our final position. But you know, it actually, uh, I think it's actually going to be kind of simpler just to focus on the upward path. Because after all, remember again, we can use symmetry. If we know how long it takes us to go up, we're also going to know how long it takes us to go down. And then we'll know how long we're in the air. So I hope you realized when you looked at the question that the question was not asking how long it would take to reach the peak. You can see how important it is to really read the question carefully. This was not asking how long it would take the object to reach the peak. It's asking how long will it reach, to take, uh, reach the peak and then fall back down to the ground. That's how long it's going to be in the air. But even though this is not asking us how long it's going to take us to reach the peak, if we know how long it's going to take to reach the peak, um, we can still use that. Um, to figure out how long the object is going to be in the air. So I think that's really the simplest and most straightforward way to solve the problem. There's actually a, a couple of different ways to solve this problem. Um, but the way that we're going to do is we're still going to focus just on the upward path. We're still going to focus just on the upward path. 
so we can uh, so we can still use all this work that we had from up here. I just need to indicate to myself that the question now, finding this time is just answering a sub-question. If we find this time, that'll just be a sub-question because the main question is um, going to, uh, the answer to the main question is going to be twice this much. This is going to tell us how much time it takes to reach the peak. Remember that this final velocity is the velocity at the peak. So this is just going to tell us how long it takes us to reach the peak. But then if we double that, that'll tell us how long we're in the air. So maybe I'll make a note of that. <clears throat> the answer to the question is going to be twice the time that we get from up here. Whatever t we get from here, the answer is going to be twice that. Because it, once we know how long it takes to get to the peak, twice that is going to be how long it is in the air. Okay, so um, let's go back to the situation where we're just rising to the peak. Um, well, we have four numbers now, so we can use any kinematics equation as long as it um, includes time. We can use any of the kinematics equations as long as they include time. Uh, here's the one that I think would be simplest to use here. This is an equation that includes time, so let's plug in. Uh, our final velocity here will be zero, because remember, we're just going to figure out how long it takes to reach the peak. We're just going to figure out how long it takes to reach the peak, what well, the peak, the final velocity is zero. Our initial velocity is <coughs> positive three. The acceleration is a negative 9.8, and the time we don't know. Notice again that it would be a mistake to have subtracted over here. Some people might think that they need to put a subtraction sign in because the acceleration is negative. That would be a mistake. We're going to take care of the negative acceleration when we plug in for the acceleration. You wouldn't want to have another negative sign over here as well. You can simplify the equation. Well, uh, now again we have some algebra. We have to get the time by itself. Well, the first thing we have to do is get the 3 off of the right-hand side. We can't deal with the 9.8 until we deal with the 3 first. Um, so, how is the number 3 attached to the right-hand side? Well, it might be clearer if I put its sign in front. Now you can see that the 3 is really being added to the right-hand side. Since the 3 is being added to the right-hand side, we have to do the opposite, which is subtract. So let's subtract 3 from both sides. If you subtract 3 from 0, you get negative 3, not positive 3. So I think if someone was in a hurry, they might have ended up with a positive 3 here. But remember, we're subtracting 3 from both sides. That leaves us with negative 3 on the left-hand side. Now we can get rid of the negative 9.8 on the right-hand side. Well, the negative 9.8 is being multiplied times the time. So the opposite of multiplication is division. We have to divide both sides by negative 9.8. So we get a calculator and we do negative 3 divided by negative 0.8. We get our calculator and we do negative 3 divided by negative 9.8. And that comes out to be 0.3 seconds. Mathematically, that came out to be positive. Well, we know it has to because times are always positive. If the time had come out to be negative, we would have known we made a mistake. We don't have to indicate the sign because times are always positive. Now, I'm not going to put a box around this because remember, this is not the answer. This just tells us how much time it takes to reach the peak. Because this is how much time it takes to reach a velocity of zero. And the velocity is zero at the peak. But the question was asking how long we're in the air. So we know it takes 0.3 seconds to go from the ground up to the peak. And then it's going to take another 0.3 seconds to get from the peak down to the ground. So the answer to the question, the time in the air is going to be 0.6 seconds. 0.3 seconds to reach the peak, and then by symmetry it's going to take another 0.3 seconds to reach the ground. So the total amount of time in the air will be 0.6 seconds. There's a couple lessons here. One important lesson is always read the problem carefully. Um, if they ask you how long does it take the object to reach its peak, the answer is 0.3 seconds. Uh, but if they ask you how long does it take the object, how long is the object in the ground in total, well, that includes going up to the peak and then coming back down to the ground. That would be 0.6 seconds. So read the problem carefully. Another important lesson is how we can use symmetry. 
even though the question was focusing on both upward and downward paths, it was actually convenient to solve it by just focusing on the upward path. Why was it convenient just to focus on the upward path? Because we knew that the velocity at this point would be zero. Now, this is not the only way you can solve this problem. If you solve this problem using a different technique and you got the right answer, that's great. I'm not saying that this is the only way you can solve the problem. Uh, it's possible to um, just focus on the total trajectory, up and down, and treat this as the initial and this as the final position. And you can solve the problem that way as well. That's perfectly fine. I think it's a little bit easier and a little bit more intuitive to do it the way that we did it together. We figured out how long did it take to reach the peak, and then we knew the total time in the air was double that.